When it first happened, I was so horrified that I didn't even want to be a tsunami scientist anymore. Coming again! Big one. Big up! It took me a couple of months to even begin to remove myself from the horror of the Sumatra event and to begin to understand we would learn more science from that event and that would help us avoid such death and destruction from future events. The most common and best known cause for big tsunamis are cases where the sudden movement of the seafloor is generated during an earthquake. The biggest earthquakes on the planet happen along subduction zones where the ocean floor is going down beneath the continent. When there is a sudden motion of the fault, it pushes the water and that's what generates the tsunami waves. Not all earthquakes create tsunamis in the same way. Uh, there is a certain element of guessing involved uh, to, to, to make a judgment whether or not uh, this earthquake will have generated uh, a disastrous tsunami. And you have to do all of this um, in, in, the, in the few minutes or in the half hour that you have uh, to, um, to uh, issue a, a usable warning which, which could um, uh, be passed on to populations and perhaps um, con contribute to saving lives. There is a lot of research going on. For example, scientists known as modelers develop uh, scenarios by running simulations of what this tsunami would be given a particular seismological scenario. What you have to do for the model, you have to, of course, you have to assume some sort of the source of the earthquake source. That's the initial condition for the model. And the source that you see here is the source of this Sumatra event, which is about thousand kilometer long here. So if you will, it's the very first moment of the tsunami. The red colors indicate the positive wave, the waves above uh, normal sea level, and the dark blue uh, are the troughs, the waves below normal sea level. To the east, the initial wave was negative. It means that the water went down first before it went up. And that's what people saw in Thailand the water withdrew from the coast first. That's the indication that the negative wave reached the coast first. So apparently this simple model uh, compared very well with all the data that we have about this tsunami. Our goal is to have the model of this type ready right when the earthquake happens. So tsunami warning centers can look at the model and have the ability to say when and how high the wave are going to uh, be at the particular coastline. In the continental United States, in the lower 48, uh, the region which is of primary concern for the generation of a local tsunami is the Cascadia subduction zone, which would include the states of Washington, Oregon, and the northern part of California. We have never recorded instrumentally uh, a larger earthquake in that part of the world. The reason is that seismology is very young science. We have had instruments only for 100 years. But we have several ways of assessing the seismic potential. One of them is geological fieldwork. I first came out here in the spring of 1986. At that point, the very idea of, of very big earthquakes here was Controversial to say the least, among our scientists. Very few believed that they could happen here and nobody had demonstrated that they had happened here. So our objective right now is to have a good look at a sand layer laid down right on top of a salt marsh that got dropped down deep into the tide zone here 305 years ago. This salt marsh represented by the soil here, was way up at the level of the present salt marsh above us. The land abruptly dropped during an earthquake. The same down drop happening here happened on the seafloor and also other parts of the seafloor got raised. Well, that made a tsunami. 
and that tsunami surged in here and laid out this sheet of sand. Now, after that was all done, then the tides were free to come in because the land had dropped. So they laid down this mud, hence this three-layer cake of salt marsh peat, tsunami sand, tide flat mud. The geological record of these great earthquakes goes back thousands of years. You can go out and see banks of tidal creeks like this one that give you a 3,500 year history. You can see as many as eight earthquakes recorded in those banks. The average interval from one of these very big earthquakes here to the next is close to five centuries. We're 300 years from our most recent one, but that doesn't mean you've got 200 years necessarily to wait for the next one. Especially after the Sumatra event, we focus uh, much more on the Cascadia subduction zone because the tectonic setting is so similar. We definitely don't want the Sumatra case to repeat itself. I'm hoping that we can get our system for the real-time warning done so the next big tsunami that's going to happen will not catch us in a surprise like Sumatra event did. And I'm hoping that the next big event anywhere, when it happened, will be much better prepared in terms of warning, in terms of mitigation, in terms of uh, all the tsunami signs.